Hey, this is Gavin Kitchens Once Upon a Game, and as promised, uh, here is a uh, instructional video to show you how you can um, replace this GMT tray with a smaller... These are great, don't get me wrong, these are great, and chances are... Hello, camera. Uh, chances are, if you were to uh, uh, need a whole one, uh, you would probably go ahead and do this. But if you had a smaller box game, or you just want to take up less space or thinner space, I'm going to show you how to make one out of uh, uh, cardstock. Um, just uh, four sheets, of, uh, five sheets of cardstock, count the lid, a uh, little, little glue tape, and you're good to go. So we're going to go from this to this is the final, the final product. And as you can see, it's definitely smaller. Uh, somebody had asked about thickness. Um, about a millimeter shorter, maybe a little more. Um, but as you see, this has 20, 20 wells for uh, for game storage, and this one also will have uh, 20 wells for game storage. We'll pop the lid off here. Everything. So you see, uh, being cardstock, it's closer together. Um, it's pretty sturdy. Um, this I've redesigned. Since I did the video, or I did the uh, initial post, I've redesigned the uh, these inner sections here. Uh, these I did not glue down uh, because it would be a little hard to do. You can see here, these are pretty sturdy. I uh, don't move a lot. These do because they're not glued down. And I'll show you why it was getting a little harder to, to deal with. So, uh, so that's the bottom and the top. And we're going to make one. So to make one, you know, you'll download the template. Uh, which uh, should be available uh, soon. Uh, as soon as I post this, I'll post the uh, I'll post the PDF template. Uh, it's uh, five sheets inside. Uh, you print one of these for uh, each of the segments. So if you're going to do four segments. You'll you'll print out uh, uh, four sheets, uh, and then uh, you'll print out one more for the lid. And the, there's uh, four lids. Uh, based on the different sizes, if you do a one, a two, a three, or a four, uh, you can print a lid that's uh, uh, the right size. You'll cut along the solid lines. You'll score on the uh, the dash lines. Now, I uh, have used uh, my uh, Silhouette Cameo to cut these. Uh, I'll make the SVG files available for those of you who might have your own, uh, and you can use it and then just cut these out. And it'll what you'll see is it'll uh, you know, score the lines for you and everything. And I do that by doing uh, a dashed cut uh, for scoring, so you don't have to have a special scoring tool or anything like that. So for each page that you print out, you're going to end up with um, a, uh, one of these, which is the, uh, the um, uh, I forget what I call it, it's been a while, uh, basically the section, excuse me, there you go. And you'll end up with uh, one of these Battlestar Galactica. Uh, looking uh, cutouts, and these are going to be the divider sections that go in. Um, so these are the same, no matter how many you use, you're going to get one for each section. Um, these is going to be a little different depending on how you make it. So you see I have them all lined up this way. I usually work on these from uh, uh, right to left with doing this as the first section, this is the second, third, and fourth. So what you got to do first is you got to decide how many sections you want. So if you want a smaller box that only has 10 sections in it, uh, you do two strips, 15, 20. Uh, it all depends on what you need because you can use these for any kind of games and any kind of game storage. It's just a nice little flatter storage tray. Plano, Planos are great uh, for Euro games and stuff like that, but they are also very deep and some of them are very difficult to get, especially square objects like cubes, to fish them out of the, the well. Uh, if you use a small section that's deep, it's hard to get in there, get them out, especially got big sausage hands like this. So, um, um, what else? Preliminary. Uh, when you print out the lid uh, and cut it and score it, or whatever, it'll look like this. And we'll get to that. And they all look generally the same. The only thing that's different is the size. Uh, these, This is the same. Uh, this will shrink based on how big you want to go. So... I guess the first thing to do is to um, we'll start with determining what you want to do and in the process. So you can make, if you wanted to, you could make a single section, and then and if that's the case, you would just leave this as is. Okay, the rightmost for a single section. There's some notes on the on the 
on the cutout to show you that um, would stay the same. You want to put the double wall, double wall, double wall, double wall, except for that little bit. It's fine for a single section. If you're doing two, three, or four, your leftmost section, you're going to turn around. I'll show you how that works in a minute. But that's going to be uh, the, the other edge, the, the left edge will be uh, double wall as well. And then for the center sections, they'll go the same way as the right section, like that. But what you're going to do is you're actually going to take off this side piece here of the to turn this the double wall into a single wall. So I'm going to go ahead and do that just to show you. And since one's perforated, it should work pretty well, right? But go ahead and just make sure I get a good clean tear on it. And then you're just going to take that half of that wall off because you do not need it. And we'll see why in a minute. And the same thing for this one if you're going to make a four. But if you're going to make a three, then you would just you would tear that one off and you would come over here. And then um, no matter what, for a two, a three, or a four, this uh, leftmost piece, you're going to tear off just these little tabs here. Of that right side. So when you're cutting them, there's notes on the on the sheet, and you'll be able to just trim them immediately. But as I said, since I've had mine just kind of pre-cut blanks, so I don't need those. And then for here, so I'm going to do this one. I'm going to go ahead and take that other piece out because you do build them together um, uh, as one. You know, so you build this one and you attach this one to it. So they're not modular in the sense that you can build a bunch of these and then just kind of hook them together whenever you want. Um, you could build a bunch of singles and put them all in the box together if you wanted to do it that way. But uh, I'm going to get this off here. Okay, so a little nudge there, but there's no big deal. Okay. So. Now my uh, four blanks are ready to go. And at this point, the folding is pretty much the same. So I'm gonna just gonna shift these down. And you can use glue or you can use tape. I strongly recommend uh, pretty much glue for these and tape uh, for the Galactica. And I'll show you that uh, when we get to that part. We're gonna build this section first. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is you wanna fold all the edges in. And I don't know if you can see the little you got a you got a main center section here, perforations, and all these are double strips. So what you want to do is fold them. And you get the, basically the peaks right in the center. Um, okay, so you start folding these so you have the peaks and the wall. Fold up. Alright. These are these are actually really easy uh, to put together. Uh, you just got to remember, you know, kind of what you're doing. So the full uh, double wall, remember, is your is your right side here. So uh, first thing I'm going to do is glue the uh, most of the top and bottom walls together. So I'm just going to take a little bit of glue, run it on both sides of that, fold it over. Hold it together. This uh, glue stick is great because you know it's purple, so it shows you where you put it, and then uh, it dries clear if it should get on the outside. So all we're doing right now is just build, starting to build the walls of the section. Okay. Now we want to take. In this case, we're going to take this uh, these tabs here. On the, on the walls, on the uh, top and bottom walls, and we're going to glue them into here so it holds, forms a right angle. So just a little bit of glue. Wedge it in there, get it good and uh, straight. Basically, just when you're holding it with your thumb for about five seconds, it'll set just enough to hold it up. Do the same thing on this side. Right, a little bit of glue on there. But you're about to glue it again, so you don't have to go overkill, you just want it to hold in place. 
Right. Okay. So now you see that those are standing up. And then you're going to take some glue here and glue the side. Now you might be able to use tape here. Um, I don't attempt it on these because the glue works so much better, I think. All right, so now what you, when you've made this double wall here, right, now you've glued over those tabs that you just, you just glued on, and now you've really reinforced uh, this corner. But in order to make this corner even more reinforced, what I like to do, since this is the, the edge corner of the whole tray, let's go ahead and glue this tab here. Take this tab, glue it right on here. And it's deliberately not creased because I want it to be uh, pretty tight. I want it to be pretty tight on there, so I don't want there to be any kind of perforation. Now, if you're scoring your own, you can do that and you'll be okay. But again, just a little bit of glue here and tuck that one there. Now, that will show on the outside of your final tray, but then when you cover it with the lid, it's still going to be all right. Okay. All right, and that one, all right. Uh, is done except for these tabs here, these smaller tabs. I guess I should have gotten sooner. And these are all you're going to do is glue, glue them down to hold the wall up. Just the little one, not the one that's on the outside. Sorry about that. You end up okay. So you end up with this flap still out, and on this side you end up with this flap still out. Again, you just need a little bit to hold it in place for now because it's going to get reinforced in a minute. So stand your end up, get that down, hold it five or ten seconds. Right. And you're on. Okay. So this one is now done. Believe it or not, that is your one well. Now, if you were only doing one tray totally, right, then what you would do is you would go ahead and glue these two flaps down like so. So it's a little thin on this part, but it's okay. It's not that big a deal because you're going to put the divider in there. It's going to reinforce the whole box with some strength. And then you would do the same thing with this flap that you did over here. So you just wrap it around and glue it on the outside to kind of hold it. But we're not. We're going to build a bigger box here. So we will go to the next one. And again, remember, we've torn this flap off. So this now a single wall. Okay. You just bring it up. explaining on the first one but it's the same basic principle it's just in this case you're missing that double wall on the one side and then you bring this set up. All right. so we finished the first two boxes the rightmost box and then one of the middle boxes and then what you're gonna do is you end up putting these together like so okay and um, what's gonna happen is these are gonna join together the single wall where you tore off the edge, and this uh, fold-over wall is now going to go together and grip it. And then those extra long tabs are going to go inside of this one, so it's really going to interlock it together. So uh, put a little glue um, on this side, put a little glue on this side, and on those tabs. Right. And then they should slide right together, top and bottom, fit perfectly. So. Go right against that side, go right against that side, and then when you fold these tabs over, they're only going to fit snug up against there. And just kind of bring your fingers back and forth a couple times to lock them in place. Right. And then you got a two section tray. All right. So then take some glue, glue. Here, press this extended tab down under there, 
Mm -hmm. And that holds some two sections together again, reinforces it, glue on the flap, put it down. You are good to go on that side. Repeat on this side. Just gonna put some glue on there. Put this tab down, and it's made. If you cut it correctly, it's made so it lines up with the bottom. And then press that down. And remember, the glue goes on. This glue goes on purple, but it dries clear, so you're good to go. All right, so we have done it. We have a two-section box now, All right? Now, of course, this would not be a two-section box. Uh, I mean, you could shut it down and just use this, but I reinforce it if you flip around like I showed you with the leftmost piece, so. All right, so now we start on the next box, which again, is a, in this case, is a repeat of the second uh, section. Side's done where that one's going to go together there. We've got to finish up um, by gluing these, these walls down. Or glue, gluing the top and bottom walls were, you know, erect. So you stand those there. Get them in. Hold it in place for a few seconds. It really just takes about five seconds or so for the glue to, for the glue to set. Because okay. again, you're going to reinforce everything you do is going to get reinforced. Okay. So again, that one's done. It's ready to go. Okay. So again, piece them together. A little bit of glue on here. Just for good measure, put a little glue on this side. It doesn't really need it since it's on both sides. And then you slide them together. Put those edges down. Put that edge down. Run them together as it sets. You see here, this one's got a little bit of a flap. It's not going to matter because once you put the uh, once you put the dividers in, that kind of holds it together too. So. Uh, the reinforcement. So once again, glue on this, tack that side down under the fold, Put this side down, rock, same thing here, pull that back slightly, get your glue in there, and then a glue stick. Pull that down, pull that one over, and you're almost done. All right, so there's our, our three box section. And now we're gonna knock, uh, knock out this, uh, this fourth one, the leftmost piece. So this is kind of the reverse of this one. You're gonna have the outer wall that's solid and uh, Actually, they get a double reinforcement here with this tab if you want it. I usually do because it doesn't hurt the thickness of it. Okay. So remember, you're facing it the other way now because you want the single wall to be wrapped in there. And that's the reminder is that you got the double wall here. Okay. So the same process. A little glue on there. This guy up. I use 110 pound cardstock. It's the thicker stuff. The stuff you find at most craft stores for scrapbooking is a 60 pound. Might work. Uh, 110 pound is the kind usually for cover stock. You find an office supply store uh, for printing 
covers for reports and things like that. Um, it's just, uh, you know, obviously 110 pound is going to be a little thicker than, uh, than the 60 pound. But 60 pound might work if that's all you have. Give it a try. See what that gets you. All right, so we can go ahead and attach. So you want to leave this flap up here, right? And then you can piece that together. Let's just go ahead and build this out. You could do it either way, but it's probably easier than trying to pick up the whole tray. So again, leave the little tabs always going to go inside. Inside uh, between there's two walls. It's going to go inside the double wall for strength. If it's a single wall, like we saw in these center sections, it'll go in there, but it'll end up getting sandwiched in something else. You should never see those little single tabs when you're done. Okay. And you can actually close out this side if you want to. I don't know if it will. So this is the this is the far left side of the tray. So we can just fold that over. Here's your double wall. Now, what's going to happen here is, since these flaps are still up and these tabs are on those flaps, when you piece it together like this, that's going to be so I haven't glued it, I know. This is going to wrap over. And you'll have this one inside here, and then you can fold that down and leave this one, this one outside here to reinforce that, that grip, if you want to. And then this one, here, like we did on the other side, we'll wrap around and uh, grab on the outside of this one. So let's just finish this up real quick. Okay, so we piece these together. A little bit of glue on this side. I probably use way more glue than I need. It's like coloring, so I'm like, oh, let me color everything purple. Slip those together. Yeah, that's up. Okay. And again, they lined up. And you flip these down. It only has one place to go because they're the they're they're right on the edge, so they should sandwich right in there perfectly. If you cut everything out right. Okay, so you see the the four sections are are come together now. So in this case, we do what we did normally. Do that. Slide that tab down. Right. And now in this case, we're going to go ahead and just put some glue on this there and sandwich that over. And it all goes together, fuses together as one. Same thing over here with this tab, glue under, glue over, press that in to the bottom. The, the the purpose of these two is it helps keep the uh, uh, tray when you're done from curling up because these sections since they're together could each you know take on a little bend right and this kind of fusing them together and aligning that little tab at the bottom uh, helps with that. So I didn't get enough glue on this little tab so I'm going to fix that real quick. And so while the while everything's still putting together, it gives you a chance to keep everything aligned. All right. All right. And then lastly, we've got this little corner strengthener reinforcement section. Let me put that on. Wrap it around. Now this one aligns at the top, same as on the other side. So you do it, pull it as tight as you can, and that's gonna. Just reinforce that corner and make it one so it doesn't want to tear open. And you have to remember these are paper, these aren't plastic, so uh, you know you want to be careful with them in terms of you know drinks around them or something like that. But no different than than your chits or anything like that. Right? So there you have. And at this at this point, it doesn't matter which side's right or left, obviously because now you've got it all formed. It's just when you're putting it together that you want to remember, work that way. So your double walls, your reinforcement corners, and everything are all together. All right, so now the next step is to build the uh, divider sections that take these four 
and make them give them five sections each. So this is very simple. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take your Battlestar Galactica piece, that's what I call it, and uh, again, you'll it's got uh, uh, four peaks down the bottom, and you want to just fold those to make your little walls. And you'll you'll bump up against the edge pieces and stuff as you fold these. It's fine. You just want to get them scored or or started in the right direction because then you know once they're there, they're there. And then uh, for this one, I'm not going to use any glue, at least as far as assembling this. So once you've got the center section scored, fold these uh, fold these walls up on the side. These are these are basically. Um, the design of these is to uh, uh, help hold the the, uh, the dividers, the fins, as I call them, um, uh, vertical. And so, by like right now, if, if they didn't have these, these could flip, be flimsy when you're using them. But putting these in kind of binds them to the one next to it, and so they don't really move because this one can't move, because this one can't move, because this one can't move. So it works out pretty well. So assembling these is pretty easy, and this is where I like to use tape, and you don't end up having to actually glue too much, because everything kind of bonds together anyway. So take your strip, start on either end, and then you're gonna fold this, make it like a staircase flat, fold those tabs in, right? And then clamp, you're basically tucking them into the peaks, right? So there's the peak, and you're tucking those tabs in there. Once you get them tucked in good, you basically just grab them with your finger like an old old school puppet kind of thing, right? And then you just tape the bottoms together so that this is attached to this and they can't move. And then what happens is even though you didn't glue or tape these walls inside, they're hugged quite enough that they'll stay put, right? And it's not going to matter once these are inside this section because then they won't be able to move either. So. It's a little trickier here when you've got the two. Like this was just one, but now you're gonna have two going in. But it's really not that big a deal. You just make sure they all fold in. And again, once you've done it, it's easy. Okay, so they're all in there and you just kind of bring them together, work them together, right? And now these two tray sections are here. And those folds are now tucked inside there. And again, just give it a little bit of tape across that bottom. And it's not going anywhere. And now what you've done is this is now reinforced. And this is now reinforced. So you're going to repeat that for these other sections. you got two sections that have two, two tabs. And you got one, two sections that have one, the ones on each end. All right. So there's that one, and then finally there is this last one. Let me grip it. Right. Give it a tape. And when you're done, you've got your dividers. Okay, and those are great. So you, oh yeah, well, there's only three. Now there's three, four, and five because these are going to be made up in here. I'll show you how to do that. Now this I go back to glue for. And just take your glue. You don't need much. Just And, I, and in this case I always take the uh, the rectangle piece because it's the right size. This is just extra so you can glue it for stability. Stability. Listen to me talking. So you just put some glue on this. I should have got a new glue stick for the video. All right. So you just put some glue on each of those tabs. And then what you're going to do is you take the rectangle, put it into the box, and bump it up all the way up against the edge, press it down, and then just lay everything else in. Press it down. And when that glue sets, you now have your dividers. Now one thing I should have probably done, and I forgot to do here, is to put a little glue on this so that this holds there. So since we got a little play, I'm just gonna try to wedge some glue down in there. 
just to strengthen it. It'll set, it'll be fine. And then that won't hold together. But I should have done that, especially on the outer edges. Because you do actually have a box, and the box is cardboard, and it could, you know, with humidity kind of splay a little bit. It's not going to really affect anything. Uh, you could also, after the fact, go through and just put a little bit of tape. And very carefully get it in there. And bind that if you wanted to. Right? So just it makes it a little cleaner. So you do that uh, before. Here's another tray I've already made up. So before, go ahead and put some glue right here. I'll hold it together. So I'm going to go ahead and... You don't need much for this part. But you do need your glue to not come apart. So, next pause, I'll do another one. Do another glue stick. So again, you push it in as far as you can up top, and then drop it in because you've already kind of set the uh, distance as you built it, right? Because you taped all the pieces together, and if you cut them out right, they're a fixed size. So there we go. Now you're with the glue there on these three middle sections. It's kind of reinforcing everything again. So it's getting very durable as you're building it up, right? So now we got ten sections, right? Wish I'd done that. Wish I had done that. There just to fix it for this one. All right, so the magic of technology, I now have a brand making new glue stick. It should not come apart on me. Yay me. So I've got another one here, and I'm just going to finish building this out. And you see here this uh, this little flap is starting to get loose. You can either, you can oops, go back and glue that. It actually looks like I may not have put glue on it. Well, not enough. I'm going to go ahead and glue that one down because it was totally loose. But then this one's loose, but when that thing goes in there, it's going to wedge it. It's going to be just fun. So I'll go ahead and switch over to this side. And I usually go ahead and try to keep all the rectangles at the top so everything builds you know, the same. You could, in theory, sandwich this one down here, and they still line up pretty close. So, But I'm OCD, and I just do that. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and put this one in. So you may, you know, for a regular GMT game, with a, you know, with a, that you're going to need the whole tray for anyway, you might as well just use theirs. Those are great. There's nothing wrong with those at all. Love them, love them, love them. But there have been times that I want less, or maybe I want to divide my forces up into their own trays. Um, case in point would be like uh, old school tactical and stuff like that, where it's like you want to, to maybe... separate things out a little bit more. Uh, I know Combat Commander, I have six or uh, about four trays, and you got a lot of forces, you know, intermingled together. And so with this, you can actually, uh, you can have an American tray, a German tray, whatever, and just, just do two. If you're only using two, then just use two of these, right? Okay, so uh, I'm not going to bother building uh, this other one out yet. You know how to, you know how to do that. It's pretty simple. Um, uh, and it'll go in there, but I'll show you real quick how to do the lid. Um, lid's very simple. Um, it's basically using the same principles we got. It's, it's each side is double walled. You got the top. Uh, you're going to fold them. Um, they're kind of. It, it's kind of backwards. I would have preferred that the uh, folds go in so that the edges are not seen. All right. But that got a little cumbersome for trying to assemble. So I just did it where the folds show out and who cares. And you can always you can always tape it back together if you want to. But uh, as you'll see here, right? So when you got these, really all you get is four simple joins. You got this fold here. It's going to go inside this one here. So the first thing you do is glue the sides of the tabs, glue them to, together to shore them up. Now obviously the GMT trays are clear so you can see your forces. 
but you know you can't write on those so you could write on these you could put stickers on these um, so you got that bonus one thing you could do is you could um, very carefully if you want to and I didn't design this in there but you could cut this out leave yourself a margin and then glue some uh, clear plastic into the lid to kind of make it so that you can see through it I just not gonna bother with it I don't know what I don't know what's what I know you put a, you can maybe put a descriptive label you could put a uh, a legend to what's in what bin so when you go and put stuff back so in this case for the edges you just glue that tab as we've been doing the whole time stand it up you can see this is coming apart I didn't get a lot of glue in there and it's not holding but it will if you if you put enough glue in there or like I said you can when you're done you can end up taping it so we'll do this side here and then stand that up the lids are more just to keep your counters from falling out let's see glue that together and then just like we've been doing you're going to glue this other wall over top of those tabs and that reinforces them keeps it strong very important that you score everything correctly if you do a lot of if you do a lot of this uh, other other projects I've done the card shoes the uh, the um, not fold that one incorrectly. Let's refold them. Uh, the card shoes or the tuck boxes, things like that. Um, or you do other cut and fold projects yourself. Getting a cricket or a like I have a silhouette cameo and using that is the bomb. Because it just makes it all that much easier. I also use it to make my dividers, my GMT tray dividers, which are really awesome because they, they subdivide these 20 wells even further up to up to two or three. So that's done. Get the glue on this last wall here. Put it together. Like I said, there are lids for the one chamber, the, the one section, two section, three section, and this is the four section. Um, remember the rules I showed you about putting it together otherwise, but when all said and done, you should now have a lid that will fit on your tray. Since it's paper, you may have to get it a little bit. Okay. But once you once you have it kind of kind of worked, it'll just work. And then you know there's nothing to stop you from putting a rubber band around it. And then, as I said, if you really want those seams closed, you could tape it, tape it together. I'll hold it a little tighter. All right. Uh, but the net result is just like this one. You now have a four section. Uh, GMT compatible tray um, that definitely takes up less space than this. It's not the same quality as this, but it can be subdivided a lot easier into one, two, three, or four sections. So, anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you find these useful. And uh, let me know if you've made some. Thanks again for watching. God bless you.